Hi, everybody. It's really nice to meet you. My name is Elin Hellisten, and I work as a communications officer at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. That's a long name, so I'm going to say SLU from here on. I'm here to introduce you to SLU with a quick overview. And I, if you have questions after this, I hope you will ask them to me. Here we go. What's so? Here we go. Uh, the first thing I would like to say is that SLU is a research intense university. About 70% of our turnover goes to research and doctoral education. Uh, we have scientists that produce more than 1,600 scientific articles per year, and we do this. About 75% of those are co-published with universities in other countries. So we're quite international in our approach. And our publications are among the most cited ones within our scientific field. I would also like to mention that we are highly ranked internationally. We ranked as number three in the world in the QS ranking in agriculture and forestry. And we're also ranked as number eight in the world in ecology and agricultural sciences by the Shanghai ranking. So that's something we're quite proud of. A little about what we do. SLU works on issues that are fundamental to us as human beings and that concern every living thing on earth. And those are big words, so I'm going to give you some examples of what I mean by saying that. And I'm going to start with sustainable food supply. Uh, for example, with adapting to climate change, producing new food, more environment and climate friendly food production, urban cultivation, digitalized cultivation, food waste, health issues, business administration, and so on. We work with clean water and oceans, for example, with uh, environmental toxins, land-based fish farming, drinking water, and of course, the problems with drought and flooding. We also work with sustainable urban and rural areas, for example, with uh, green roofs, uh, maps, urban cultivation, and adapting buildings to cope with extreme weather uh, and rising sea levels. We work with biomaterials and bioenergy, that is materials and energy that can be used to replace fossil-based products and raw materials, such as uh, starch or cellulose instead of plastics and using bioenergy as a fuel. We work with animal and human welfare, for example, with antibiotic resistance, zoonoses, food and health, green spaces and cities, outdoor life, animal welfare, and so on. And we work with biodiversity, like predator issues, invasive plants and animals, how to manage forest and lands, and the mapping of species and endangered species. We like to say that our knowledge creates the right conditions for a sustainable, thriving and better world. And SLU is contributing to the achievement of the Global Sustainable Development Goals, both in Sweden and internationally. And you already get a sense of the areas that are important to SLU, but it's really important, so I, I'm going to mention them once again. It's climate change, like Agriculture and forestry must both be adapted to and contribute to mitigating climate change, right? The food supply, finding resource efficient, sustainable solutions for increasing global food production. Sustainable cities to make plans for how to deal with the effects of climate change, such as extreme weather and rising sea levels. Uh, Bio-based economy to move from a fossil-based to a bio-based economy that requires new solutions and trade-offs, such as issues surrounding land use, like should we cultivate food, animal feed, fiber, or energy crops, and who gets to decide on this? And we also have um, global health, for example, to reduce the risk of spread of zoonoses and diseases carried by insects and to cut down on the use of antibiotics in animal husbandry, and which could help slow down the development of resistance to antibiotics. A big issue for all humanity, I would say. And biodiversity and ecosystems. SLU has the task of environmental monitoring that's unique for Sweden, for SLU in Sweden. 
that we have that task. And how do we actually go about this? Well, we have a central unit called ASLU Global that supports research and development projects in collaboration with scientists and universities in local income countries. We are a member of the Global Challenges University Alliance, where we collaborate with agricultural universities from all around the world to hone the sustainable development goals. And there are innovation based on information expertise from SLU that makes a huge difference to society. And I would also like to mention that SLU is environmentally certified and has the target of becoming climate neutral by 2027, so that's quite soon. Moving on to education, the reason most of you are here today, I believe. And the first thing I always like to mention when talking about education at SLU is that our students are very sought after on the labor market. They often get jobs straight after graduating and that's something we are really, really proud of. We offer some 50 degree programs in natural science, social science, technology and the humanities. And among those, there are about 20 international master programs and one international bachelor program. And they are not all in agriculture. Some of them are in agriculture, but we also have biology, economics, communications, landscape architecture, and a lot of more subjects. We had about 4,400 students in 2021. And we are working on developing the program offering and increasing the number of students by 2027 because we believe that there will be a need for more SLU students in the future. For SLU. We believe that the world needs more SLU students. As I mentioned, we are quite research intense. We have expertise in natural science, of course, but we also have excellent research in the fields of humanities and social science. And we often work with a transdisciplinary approach, which means that we combine curiosity-driven basic research with more specific studies aimed at solving concrete pro problems, both locally and globally. And uh, just to give you some example of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about socially beneficial research, I might mention the artificial spider silk that we do research on. It's uh, something that has great potential for use in medical applications, both on animals and humans. And the climate friendly rice that emits the minimum amount of the greenhouse gas methane during cultivation. That's some really cool research that I've done at SLU at this moment. Some words about our infrastructure. We have a comprehensive infrastructure, which researchers both within and outside SLU can use. And first of all, I would like to mention SVIA that you can see on the picture. SVIA is our research vessel. She's one of the most modern research vessels in the world and is owned by SLU. She was specially built for marine research and environmental monitoring. monitoring and she has been operating since 2019. I would also like to mention the University Animal Hospital, which has many specialities in veterinary medicine in Uppsala. And this is the only university animal hospital in Sweden. Uh, there are also research station and experimental parks, um, facilities for animal and plant research, databases, biobanks, and so on all over Sweden. And when I say all over Sweden, I mean all over Sweden. Sometimes we say that we are the longest university in Sweden, actually, which you can see here. But we are located at three principal locations that are home to our four faculties. And starting in the south in Alnarp, close to Malmö, and also quite close to Copenhagen in Denmark, we, uh, we have Alnarp, the faculty where the Faculty of Landscape Architecture, Horticulture and Crop Production Science is located. In the north, in Umeå, we have the Faculty of Forest Sciences. And in Uppsala, close to Stockholm, we have the Faculty of Natural Resources and Agricultural Sciences and the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine and Animal Science. And this is also where most of the university administration is located. 
which um, we also run research, education, environmental assessment, and collaborative activities at many research days and experimental parks and campuses throughout Sweden. So SLU really is everywhere. Some numbers for you. As I mentioned, we have about 4,400 full-time students. And that's full-time students. If we would count individuals, there would probably be about 10 to 12,000 people. 530 doctoral students, 50 degree programs. 3,200 full-time employees. That's quite an interesting number. Because if you do the math with 3,200 employees, and 4,400 students. You can see that there is a lot of teacher time for every student at SLU. And this is something that's really unique for SLU. This isn't how it usually looks in Sweden either. We have a lot of teacher time for students. Let's move on to the paperwork. This picture shows the process for applying to our study programs. and it always starts with the same thing, basically, information. Check out SLU's webpage to get the facts about requirements and other things concerning the program you wish to apply for. You can also chat to our student ambassadors. If you want a student perspective on SLU, they, and you will find them on the web as well. The application is made on the website universityadmissions.se. The same site for all universities in Sweden. The application period opens on October 17th and closes on January 16th. And you have until February 1st to upload your documentation and pay in your application fee. Uh, and one thing that's important to know is that you will not need a motivation letter to apply to SLU. The notification of selection, selection results sorry, are published on March 30th. And hopefully the results are positive. And as soon as you're done with celebrating this, you can move on to preparing for your journey and apply for a visa. And this is a process that takes time. So make sure you start this as soon as possible. And the semester will start in the end of August 2023. Some very short words about scholarships. SLU offers a few scholarships that covers tuition fees only. Uh, you may also apply for the Study in Sweden, SI scholarships. They cover tuition fees and living expenses. And there is more info about scholarships on our web, if you would like to learn more about that. Here we go, that's my presentation, and I'm going to close this now so I will be able to see something else than my presentation.